What is going on guys? We are back with yet another highly requested stock to take a look at. And the stock we will be looking at today will be Workhorse. Ticker symbol WKHS. Which as you can see by this chart has just exploded in the past month or so. And you know what? There's a huge move coming with this stock in the near future. With Tesla going parabolic, Buying Tesla now and 2xing or 3xing your money in a month is just not happening. I, I think. But can Workhorse give you a 2x or 3x return quickly, or is it just another pump and dump loser like this guy's company? I'll answer those questions and more for you. Right now. Welcome back everyone. In this video we will cover what is Workhorse? I'll tell you the three things I absolutely love about Workhorse, and I'll also tell you the two things that I hate about Workhorse. And I'll let you know whether you should dump a few shares of Tesla and buy Workhorse, or is it just another pump and dump stock? So we hit 10,000 subscribers on Sunday. And yes, I sat there like a nerd and didn't eat dinner waiting for it to hit that number so I could grab a screenshot. This is all due to you guys keeping it frothy out there. So thank you very much. I'm truly humbled to say the least and this is just awesome. I can't say thanks enough. And if the comment section is right, I should be able to get a date now that I'm at 10,000 subscribers. So hit me up on Instagram or slide into my DMs. That, that's what you're supposed to say, right? Yeah, no, I don't know. Anyways, let's dive into Workhorse and figure out if we should buy this thing. So what is Workhorse? Workhorse is another EV stock on everyone's radar, it seems. Kind of crazy how many of these stocks have been coming to market at the same time. I have a completely separate video on that coming out soon. But with Workhorse, it has already had a great run in the past month. But is there more to this company? Actually, they already get high marks just because I can actually pronounce their name and spell their name. Trust me, Hylion took me forever to pronounce and it's still on my notes like this. Hi, Lee, on. Because if I just see the word, I have no idea how to say it properly. So A plus so far for Workhorse. So the first thing I love about Workhorse, they actually are producing vehicles and being used in the real world. Seems like that's kind of a commodity in this whole EV startup, tech, whatever boom we're in right now. And the biggest hurdle to every wannabe vehicle manufacturer is, you know, actually being able to produce a vehicle. Scaling is the next challenge after that, and then bringing the cost down to hopefully become profitable is the last big hurdle. So the fact that they are already producing vehicles and have many on the road right now means the concept is proven and being used. And they also have a factory in Indiana that will be able to produce up to 60,000 vehicles a year. So they do not need to worry about factory build out for a long time. So they can produce a vehicle, solving the first problem, and they have the factory capacity to scale, solving the second problem. Now they just need to solve the final problem, which is profitability. So outside of Tesla, they are further along than the other EV players in the market outside of NEO, which is its own unique situation in and of itself that I covered in a previous video last week. So I'll link that video I did along with my thoughts on all the hot EV stocks so you don't have to find them. They will just pop up so you can get that information on whichever one you're interested in. I'll put them all up there for you. The second thing I love about Workhorse is their niche and their laser focus on that niche. Is it niche or niche? Public school, you say niche. Private school, you say niche. Workhorse seems to be doing something completely different altogether. Tesla is in the semi-business, so is Nikola and Hylion. Long haulers, big rigs that haul trailers and move them across the country. That's not what Workforce does. They specialize in what they call last mile delivery vehicles. Which to me just means, you know, the UPS or the Amazon truck or even the post office type vehicles. So who are the other EV players in this niche specifically? There aren't many and I couldn't find any that were strictly EV and had a stock you could buy. Let me know down in the comments if you know of others but I couldn't find any. And the third thing I love about Workhorse is their contract pipeline. Look, 
Having big players is hugely important in these non-consumer type markets. So even though Tesla Semi and others may look cool or appeal to us individually, that really doesn't matter in this segment. You're not selling a $50,000 vehicle to one person. You're selling 1,000 vehicles to one company. So the hype we feel really is irrelevant to the reality of what moves these type vehicles. So look at this list of relationships they have already. Huge companies from UPS, Ryder, and maybe even the post office? They actually have a six year relationship with UPS and have been working with them for years on making their vehicles better and I'm sure to give UPS exactly what they want. The hardest part in all of this is the customers and they have some big players at least willing to entertain potential partnerships with them. They are also in the running for the big postal contract worth up to $6 billion or so, which to me would be the catalyst needed to turn them profitable. But more on that a little bit later. Now not everything is perfect and all roses and sunshine. So let's talk about the two things I hate about Workhorse. The first thing I hate about Workhorse is they have a really weak balance sheet. As much as I love a lot of products of a particular company, this is stock trading. And unfortunately you can have a great product and still not be a good stock because of the balance sheet. And looking at their balance sheet, it's just really weak. Specifically, their debt is just too high for my taste given their assets and revenue. As you can see right there, their debts are way larger than their assets. I mean a lot bigger. And I don't like their cash balance either. It's just not enough given the amount of burn they go through, which means they will need to raise more capital at some point in time if they want to continue to grow. And as we will see shortly, this doesn't look to be their strong suit. But more importantly, they are still not profitable and look to be at least a few years out until it is even profitable if they turn a profit. Obviously that could change, but for now, profitability is still a ways out. And the second thing I don't love about this company, the run up was too quick and actually based on a poor debt raise. I've started noticing a pattern that has been happening with the latest hot stock on Robinhood or wherever. There is an explosive move up on good news like Workhorse saw with a huge move up after it was announced that they are raising more capital. But looking at it more closely, the debt holders were the clear winners and the shareholders were the clear losers. Yes, I agree, capital raises are huge for a startup, but this raise allows debt holders to convert to equity or stockholders, which will dilute the shares even further. There were a couple other nuances in there too, but that's the main one that I took away. There is good capital raises and there is bad capital raises. And I don't really feel this was a good one. But the data from Robinhood seems to confirm the interest from the retail investor spiking huge. And I would say a good portion of those investors did not read the actual details of the capital raise. And honestly, those notes are not the easiest to read. They suck to read. And given all the mania that surrounds Tesla, I think that has produced huge run-ups in price as record numbers of small investors bid up the price of these speculative stocks making huge gains happen in a very small amount of time. And check this out, there is a narrative out there that Tesla is too expensive and overvalued right now. now. Slow down, slow down, I know there are some that feel it's undervalued or just right, but I don't think any of us would deny the fact that it's at least a little frothy. But looking at this chart, it looks like freaking Coca-Cola next to Workhorse. Look at that chart, it's just crazy. Yes, it's a speculative stock, but I did not expect to see that level of variance when compared to Tesla. That is a lot and says a lot about where the price of the stock is currently. So should you dump a few shares of Tesla and buy Workhorse? Or is it just another pump and dump stock? I like the fact that despite the fact that the stock is speculative, they have been at it for a while, have an actual product, and have an actual factory to build it in. They also have relationships with some of the biggest players who would use their vehicles for their businesses like UPS. I also love the fact that ARK Invest is involved with the stock. That gives me confidence right there to buy it. But be very cautious and do not let all of that rock you to sleep. This is still a speculative growth play. Even if they actually do have revenues and actually produce something and have real customers. But I feel the stock only has one potential catalyst in the foreseeable future. 
And that catalyst would be how the Postal Service contract shakes out. If it goes to workhorse, especially the whole contract, the stock will run up huge. And a 2x or 3x on your money would not surprise me at all, and I think it'll be quick. However, if they miss all together, or if their piece of the Postal Service contract is very underwhelming, it will be a quick fall back down. So my take on the stock is, I do not think it is a pump and dump stock, but it will absolutely act like one if they miss on this contract with the Postal Service. So please use caution and make sure you aren't using money you cannot lose. And I also will not be selling any shares of Tesla to buy a workhorse. My strategy and personal philosophy is to not sell long-term holds for a 50-50 speculative play. But there is exactly one event coming that will skyrocket the stock or send it back down to where it was. So if I wanted to play a game of 50-50 on one event, I'd rather just play roulette instead. Either way it falls, you know, like up or down in price, I will reevaluate the stock after the contract is sorted out and the hype dies down as I actually like the prospects long term and you know, it doesn't hurt that ARK Invest believes in them as well. But if I change my mind and decide to buy some, I will post the buy over on Patreon immediately like I always do, so check me out there. Maybe it's over there, no it's over there. And show your support for the channel by, you know, liking the video. And make sure you are following me on Instagram so you get the latest updates on my dating life. Wait, that doesn't exist. Okay, updates on stocks. Yes, that's it. But I think it's going to be a crazy next few weeks. So make sure you are subscribed, which you can do right here, so you can get the truth on all the craziness. And here are the videos I promised about all the up and coming EV players that are hot right now. And I think I pretty much covered the whole screen, so pick one quick.